Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum and good morning. So, we continue with our lectures for today. So, let me share the screen. So are you seeing this? Right. Uh, so I think uh, let's just recall back uh, what we did right before your test two. So we have actually gone into looking at the available transformations for natural dynamics. So today we just uh, continue with that. Uh, let's recall there are two different uh, transformations that we did. One is essentially your gauge transformations. And then the other one will be uh, this with respect to the potentials. Okay, The potentials are given by a four vector. Okay. And uh, in the four vector, there is a vector potential and a scalar potential, which have uh, come across before this. And uh, the fact that this is not unique, you always have this uh, possibility of adding another function psi for which the, the, uh, the spatial components uh, will be give, given by the gradient of psi. And, uh, of component will be given something with respect to the time derivative of psi. So uh, we have done that and also we've gone into the Lorentz transformation. So uh, remember your both of your electric and magnetic fields are encoded inside your field strength tensor. Okay, So we can actually look at the case how this tensor transforms Okay. And then we apply, uh, to, to particularly of interest to us, to apply the case of a Lorentz boost. Because that uh, essentially tells us about a frame which is moving with respect to another frame. Okay. So uh, what we have found out, essentially, uh, in this case, our Lorentz boosts are taken in the x direction, the first direction you'll find that, okay, your electric field in the first direction or in the x direction, uh, in both of the moving frames and the uh, stationary frame, they are the same. Okay, your E1 dash equals to E1, and similarly for B1 dash equals to B1. Okay, so... Uh, what about the other components? The other components for the electric field, you can see over here, yes, E2 dash, uh, your E2 gets modified uh, by uh, Lorentz, what we call Lorentz factor, and it also has acquired a magnetic field component. Okay. So this is something that we have seen before this. Uh, similarly, for the case of your magnetic field, okay, you get modified the magnetic field components together, it requires an electric field uh, conformance. Okay. So, uh, this is quite uh, interesting in a sense. Uh, usually, uh, if you remember the way we do say boost transformation on a particular vector okay you find that uh, the, the components that got changed are usually the components which are uh, in the direction of the boost but in this particular case your electric field and your magnetic field uh, the one that's been changing is the, the autog orthogonal components okay so in fact, we can sum up 
in this manner so instead of taking your boost in uh, in the x direction i can take now your boost direction to be any particular uh, direction of v okay so this is arbitrary direction so uh, not necessarily just in the x direction could be having uh, both uh, what you call what you call x and y and z uh, components in this particular boost direction but from the results before uh, we should be able to show that no, uh, that your components of your electric field which are parallel to this v okay and then your uh, and your magnetic field as well the parallel components to the uh, v direction will not be changed now if i let's suppose okay and this is not going to be uh, let's suppose if i ask you how to prove this what will you do anyone what would you do in order for you to prove that this general result is true yes uh, what you can actually do is essentially to uh, your v is in this direction right so all you need to do is just simply to rotate this okay then you should be able to rotate uh, the other comp uh, components of the electric field and magnetic field and then you'll be able to show that okay or uh, this is some arbitrary case x u y u z and then you do a rotation so that it falls into the x direction okay so in other words uh, we can actually show this and uh, if you look at the other components the, the the other components will be the what we call the perpendicular components okay uh, in this particular case, the perpendicular components will acquire, uh, for example, the electric field will acquire the uh, magnetic field, and your magnetic field will acquire the electric field. Okay? And uh, if you just look at the way we have uh, obtained this, you'll find that, okay, uh, in this case, for example, uh, your E2 over here acquires a B3 component. Okay, so in other words, uh, uh, you can see that the you no. Know, uh, suppose I were to write this in terms of E I dash. Okay, then this would be something like okay, I'm I'm gonna get your gamma E I. But uh, I over here is supposed to be 2 here, but I need a 3 here. What do I do is essentially I do a V, I think it's a V cross B. So this will be an I. Let me just check below. That's the form that we want. Yeah. So there will be some. Uh, factors coming here because you have your v on c there so that will be plus gamma v on c okay and then remember that your v in this particular case is x zero zero okay and then you will see that uh, since your v has only non-zero component in the first one so that means uh, the only way that you can get uh, a non-zero component from this uh, cross product will be uh, just having a uh, one and say remember we wanted to have the 
second component here i equals to two so that means one and three okay so you get uh, essentially uh, b3 here okay so the same thing for the case of magnetic field. so i will not go through each of them uh, so the general form that you're supposed to get is something like this okay and over here uh, you see that this is written in terms of the perpendicular components okay uh, perpendicular to what perpendicular to v okay and over here i'm still writing your magnetic field vector here in terms of the whole vector but i could easily turn this into a perpendicular component because your v cross b only uh, will involve the uh, perpendicular component okay if if your b contains a parallel uh, component uh, with respect to the v your v cross b uh, parallel okay so in other words i can write this for example uh, let's write b as equals to b parallel plus b uh, perpendicular okay so v cross b over here will be v cross b parallel plus b perpendicular and since this is uh, parallel to v so you only left with v cross b perpendicular okay so uh, similarly for the case of magnetic field you you know you get uh, you should be able to deduce this formula from the, the special case that we had earlier okay and uh, we can again uh, rewrite this in terms of the perpendicular components right uh, so in other words uh, when you do a boost transformation uh, you will see that uh, the only components that, that get uh, changed is just the perpendicular components of your electric and magnetic field okay uh, one of the question is okay uh, if your electric and magnetic fields on the whole together with the parallel and perpendicular components change uh, what doesn't get changed under change of uh, reference uh, inertia frames okay well you just think of it in terms of what scalars that you can actually get i think we have done this before as an example inside your you no know, example of a tensor and then you also had this inside your uh, test too okay so the only uh the only scalars that you can get from your your field strength tensor is just to contract your covariant uh, tensor with your con contravariant tensor and that gives you this quantity which is uh, the difference between the um, magnitude square of your magnetic field with the electric field or you can take one of this uh, field strength tensor and change it to a dual field strength tensor okay and then contract it with the no the, the field strength tensor uh, in this case uh, this is the dual in terms of uh, covariant case and then this is the, the original uh, field strength tensor but in this case is the contravariant case and in that particular case we have actually shown this to be four times of e dot b now interestingly you can see that okay the only components that are going to be uh, uh, so if you look if you look at the case of this answer on the uh, right hand side okay your b squared okay if you think in terms of, of uh, how should i say it? Uh, if you change this to a, a 
let's suppose I'm going to do this. Let's suppose consider this. Maybe I do this in an exercise. Okay. Consider this kind of uh, contraction now, where the dash frame is essentially the the boosted frame. You can actually see that you get back to this particular scalar. Okay. So uh, the same over here, and over here is a bit more clear because what's going to happen is that uh, uh, the, the dot product, let's suppose I have E parallel here, so that the only uh, component that's going to be dot product with your E will be your B parallel. Okay, So your, your perpendicular, perpendicular components are going to be uh, what you call, uh, no, will vanish under the dot product. But again, if you want to do this more uh, directly, then you need to do this. Okay, and find out what the answer is. Okay, so in other words, uh, when you do this new dash, new dash, you need to consider all these different, uh, what you call, transformation over here. Okay. Now, uh, The other thing that one uh, one can actually do is to look at a special case where your electric field and magnetic field are given by plane waves. And uh, can anyone tell me when will this occur? When is exactly uh, electric field and magnetic field will be components of a plane wave. Anyone? Are you still there? Now recall uh, the plane waves uh, I think one of the lectures, the plane waves, uh, you can actually take, uh, get this solution in terms of plane waves when, uh, when you have uh, your Maxwell equation in vacuum. Okay, so when, when it's in vacuum, what, what, what do you have? Your rho is zero, your g is also zero. Okay, and the, the the kind of equation that you get from the Maxwell equation in this case will be a wave equation. So in other words, the wave equation is given. Uh, the solutions are given by plane waves. And for the these plane waves, if you simply check the solutions before, you will find that okay, uh, in this particular case, your uh, your magnitude squared of your magnetic field must be equal to the magnitude squared of your electric field as well as uh, your electric field will be perpendicular to the magnetic field. So if you remember, I think in, I'm not sure, first year physics or even high school, I'm not sure, uh, if you have, say, your electromagnetic uh, wave propagation is in this direction, then uh, uh, I'm not sure which is which, but uh, your oscillations for your electric field goes in this direction, okay, and then your magnetic field will go in the other, in the other you know, perpendicular direction. Have you seen this kind of thing before? Right. Well, I hope so. Okay, anyway. So in other words, uh, you have this condition to be obeyed for the case of a plane wave, okay? And uh, these are essentially, if you put into this, will give you zero, okay? And uh, for this case, it's, uh, we say that the, elect uh, the electromagnetic field is called a null electromagnetic. 
and uh, the other thing that one uh, one has is the fact that your electromagnetic field will, uh, can be said to be polarized okay you define polarization okay so remember that this is your direction of propagation So the only components that one has is going to be, let's say this is X, then uh, one of the fields will be in the, say, Y direction, and the other one is, sorry, this will be Z, uh, and then uh, Y direction is going to be that, and then Z direction is going to be that, okay? So that defines for an uh, electromagnetic wave the idea of polariz polarization. So what do you call this kind of waves? Anyone tell me? Going back to first year physics, how many types of waves do you know? One is called long longitudinal. What's the other one? Transverse. Okay. So your your electromagnetic field is essentially a transverse wave. Okay. A general wave will have both. Will, will have will be both uh, longitudinal and transverse. No, I mean they have both oscillations. Okay. So, uh, so that idea uh, being a transverse wave, uh, you can always define this idea of polarization, and then uh, uh, that would tells us about you know, how your E and B. Uh, magnetic field and your electric fields are oriented in space. Okay. All right. So let's move on to a different thing. So uh, over there, uh, we have not considered the idea of a dynamic equation. So a dynamic equation uh, in in uh, in the case of your electrodynamics, we involve charges, uh, sort of charges, sort of corresponding charges will respond to your electric field and magnetic field. So let's just uh, recall our uh, high school physics over here. So if you put, uh, for example, an electric charge inside your electric field, there will be a force uh, acting on that electric charge and that will give you uh, the essentially your rate of change of momentum for that particular part charge particle okay so uh, one should be able to write this equation in a relativistic form so the question is what is the uh, relativistic form over here well, you know from over here, this is going to be a vector equation. Okay. This is a vector here. So on the right hand side, sorry, the left hand side should be also a vector. But now the fact that your E, uh, your E inside your relativistic form are given by F mu nu. It's a tensor. Okay. So in order for us to get a, a, a vector out of a tensor, you need to contract this uh, with some other vector. So the claim here is given by as follows. Here, uh, your, the thing on the right hand side over here is replaced by your four momenta vector. Okay. And the four momenta vector is taken the derivative with respect to your proper time okay so this uh, will behave this will transform as a forward okay so now we look at this uh, left hand side here which is going to be corresponding to the uh, so left hand side here which correspond to the right hand side over here so our claim is that we need a four vector. So what we need is to contract the field strength tensor with 
with some forward and now our claim over here is given by the forward velocity so uh, let me just uh, this is written in terms of mixed tensor times uh, the contrary matter I could easily do this as replace this as F mu nu V nu or F mu I need your mu on the top oops so the only way because I have mu on the top then I would need just the following okay. so either this or that okay. so it doesn't matter I mean uh, you just need to make sure that control random forward here will be another uh, will be equal to another control random forward right uh, how to check that this is equation is actually true so let's go to the proper frame okay so in the proper frame uh, your dp mu d tau is given by m not dv mu d tau okay because uh, in your proper frame your 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 mass are just replaced by your rest mass Okay. and dv mu d tau is essentially your your four acceleration and your four acceleration of proper frame are given by that okay what about the right hand side over here well in the proper frame we know that this is going to be uh, given by this uh, zero velocity here and then your fourth component will be just equals to C. So you do the contraction here. So the contraction will be, you know, uh, mu I, V I, where this is running from I equals to one to three case, plus F mu four, V four. But then your vi, your vi in your proper frame will be just zero here. So you're just left with that. Okay. And v4 is just equals to c. So I can bring the c on the other side. And this will just give you equals to q mu f mu 4. And I'll leave this as an exercise for you to see what is F mu 4. F mu 4, in terms of mixed tensor, you have to remember that you know, uh, sometimes it is uh, the one that is given is just your covariant case. You have to make sure that you do the right uh, index uh, juggling okay, uh, to make sure that this corresponds to that. Okay. So if you look at this in the proper frame, it actually does give you the right equation, which is F equals to QE. Okay. So uh, in other words, if, if this is true in your proper frame, okay, this equation is true in your proper frame, then it will be true for all frames. Okay. So let's look at generally what actually happens over there uh, because uh, the one that, 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 that you just did was to see how a charge in its frame, okay, the charge is uh, moving uh, uh, inside this electric field and then uh, you're thinking of the, 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 the frame that goes along with the charge which is the proper frame you get that equation to be true but if you just take the point of view a general frame then uh, you expect this to be true and you just uh, uh, enumerate all the components over, over this particular equation so on the on the left hand side you're going to get your three momenta okay 
and then your your fourth component will be just EOC and your DD tau is actually uh, remember tau is given in terms of T by 1 over gamma T if I'm not mistaken okay so that will just correspond to gamma DDT okay so on the on the right hand side you have a F mu nu again you need to make sure that uh, the matrix that you write down over here will correspond to this mixed tensor okay and that is uh, I claim this to be that I'll let you check for yourself and then your V mu will be given by that okay but now remember that this V mu is now in the general frame so you have your uh, Lorentz uh, factor multiplying all your components in the first three components and then for the fourth one will be multiplying the, the, the constant C okay so this is uh, uh, just enumerating components of this equation so let's uh, just multiply out these two matrices here and then you find that okay you'll get this equation over here which I can write in terms of a three-dimensional vector as follows the P D T equals to Q E plus 1 over C V cross P okay which is essentially your Lorentz force equation okay. what's the last equation the last e the, the fourth uh, component thing will be this so you see that your dE dt here e is the energy over here so you have to be uh, to understand no we use the same symbol here your e over here is the electric field because it's a vector okay. so you can see that the change the rate of change of energy is corresponding to the uh, the electric field uh, scalar product with the uh, velocity okay. in fact this you can actually see uh, that it's true because uh, you think of rate of change of energy as your work done and your work done will be just given by F dot ds dt Okay. and in this particular case you will only see that okay uh, the only component uh, the only component of F will the one be uh, given by your electric field because the other uh, magnetic field component okay, will, uh, will vanish because of your cross product term so uh, in other words over here you you recognize that your magnetic field will not do any particular work to the system okay right uh, because of this though uh, uh, essentially you ha you have a feeling that that something is not uh, uh, these two equations are supposed to be uh, independent equations, okay? As components of four vector. They are considered independent. But as you can see over here, the fact that uh, one of the components of the uh, electromagnetic field sort of drops off that indicates something okay so you can actually see this in the following way that the fact that the, the equation itself is actually are not independent because why if you contract this uh, equation over here again with another uh, four velocity okay 
what's going to happen is the following. On the left hand side, uh, your P mu, remember P mu is equal to M naught V mu. Okay, so you get M naught V mu times uh, dV mu d tau. Okay, but dV mu d tau is essentially your four acceleration. And your four acceleration and your four velocity are orthogonal to each other. So that gives you a zero. And then uh, similarly on the right hand side, you will see that uh, if you do multiply this V mu, what you have is the following. But I can now uh, play with this index. So I'll just raise this index and then lower this index. We'll get that. And I know now uh, for for the for the mixed tensor, it's hard to see the, the anti-symmetric property of your fuel strength tensor. So you always uh, try to reduce it to a, either the covariant case or the contravariant case. So in this case, we did the covariant case. So now this, you know, have definite uh, what you call symmetric properties. So this is anti-symmetric. And then for this part, you see that this is symmetric because if you interchange between these two V, you get back the same thing. So when you take, uh, no, this is something that you're supposed to learn much earlier on in, in this particular course. If you take something skew or anti-symmetric, contract this with something which is symmetric, you always get zero. So in other words, you have a, a vacuous uh, equation uh, by, by but contracting this equation with this mu. So in other words, uh, no, uh, the equations themselves, uh, no, you're supposed to have four components, but these four components are not independent of each other. Okay? Right. Let's look at some example uh, using that particular equation. No? Uh, let's take the case of a charge Q the pure magnetic field, so this is given by uh, this vector field here. So here I'm taking your B in, in the Z direction, and uh, in pure magnetic field, there's, there's, there's no electric field. So when there's no electric field, you go back to the equation that we had before. There's no electric field, so this part of the uh, term will be zero. So you have the E D T to be zero. Okay. So and then uh, if you have your relativistic energy to be zero, what is your relativistic energy? Uh, is given by your uh, rest mass times C squared uh, divided by the square root. Remember it's actually gamma M not C squared. Gamma is one over square root this. And this one, if you can actually see, you have this uh, velocity here. So this velocity can actually change. Okay, so you can think of this like like uh, the the velocity of the particle. So, but you have this equation saying that okay, the time derivative should be zero. So in other words, uh, that implies that this thing is going to be constant. Or in other words, that v here cannot change with respect to time. And that would tell you that V is actually constant. Okay. So uh, that is the fourth component. So we look now to the case of the other three components given by this uh, three vector equation. So you have dP dt equals to d dt. Uh, this is coming from uh, your, okay, this is writing in terms of, uh, it's supposed to be gamma m not v for ddp, but I'm re writing this in terms of your, uh, I can write this in, in the following way, gamma m not c squared, uh, V over C squared. OK. 
okay and that will give you e on c squared times v okay so that is just uh, dp dt on the right hand side you have this equation which is the lorentz force equation uh, and your electric field is zero okay and then you only left with this term which is v cross b So uh, one can start to uh, no, enumerate the components here. So here I'm, I'm taking the first component. So I will have uh, E over C squared. Okay. Uh, e is going to be constant here because of that. Okay. So you can bring it out. So C is just another constant. So I have dv1 dt equals to qv2b because b is only in the third component 0 0 b so now that we have this equation for the first component and then you can do the same for the second component and you get that the third component of course will be zero because then your v uh, will be parallel to b okay so uh, in this particular case, we can solve this uh, easily. That gives you the third, quantum, the third component to be uh, uh, essentially a constant. But the one that will be of interest to us is these two things. This will be a couple differential equations over here. But I can substitute uh, V1 into there or V2 this V2, I can substitute into here if I want to. So, uh, you'll get a second order uh, differential equation for which you can identify this some uh, oscillating equation that we have seen uh, uh, when we do classical mechanics. So, uh, so what happens over here, uh, we take V2, dV2 dt here is just given by that and then this will multiply with that that gives you q squared c squared b squared or e squared and we uh, write this uh, omega uh, as omega squared where omega equals to q c b over e okay. the idea here is what the idea here is we want to be able to write uh, the solutions to for the particles uh, motion okay so here what I can do now is simply to integrate this okay integrate with respect to time okay then you see that I will get the velocity here and then integrate another time then I will get the uh, what you call the, the position of the particle and you do the same for the other component okay for the other component you can always use uh, the equation that we had before because uh, v2 over here is given in terms of dv1 dt which we already actually solved and we can get that for example and integrating that will give you the y uh, component of position okay the other one is that the third component you can uh, immediately uh, integrate that to get your z component of position. So what we have now essentially, you no, know, it gives you the position of the particle inside your magnetic field. Okay, uh, your position are given by this x, this y, and this z. And if you try to look what that gives you, it gives you essentially a helical motion. Okay. So the helical motion will be clockwise about B. So B, remember, is in the Z direction. So B is pointing upwards. Uh, if it's clockwise, I think this will go down, spiraling down. Okay. This one is for the case of Q negative, like let's say for the electron. 
then this will be anticlockwise. Okay. So uh, we have done for the case of uh, charged particle in in uh, pure magnetic field. Now the next thing to do is to actually do uh, the case of a constant electric field. But I think I'm going to have to do this. If I do this, I'll probably have to skip a lot of things. Okay, never mind. I think we finished this all. Okay. Uh, so, uh, because we only have eight minutes left. Uh, so, let's do this. Uh, so, you have your electric field. And we take the electric field only in the first component. Your magnetic field is zero. So again, go back to the equation that we had before, uh, the, the, the spatial uh, equations are given by that, okay? And then uh, put in the components, you're gonna get uh, only a non-trivial case for the first component, for the, uh, for the, the other components, the X and, sorry, the Y and Z component, will give you P2 and P3 to be constant. And uh, what we're going to do next is we let one of this constant to be zero. So in this case, we take P3 to be zero. Okay. Without loss of generality. Uh, without loss of generality. Untwisted. So here that tells us what the motion of the particles in x y plane. Okay. And let's write the other constant to be p naught. Okay. So over here, if you look at that, I can integrate this equation now. Give p one equals q e x t. And uh, since uh, remember the other equation is involving your uh, energy so your energy is given by a square root of m naught squared c to the fourth plus p squared c squared so this p squared we now already know because we have set we, sort of we have integrated this one and then we have set these two constants to be the following so you get this uh, you just plug in in this uh, uh, on these components you get these two okay so the other one is essentially the the spatial part which is now remember I can write this instead so by having that I can just uh, rearrange this equation to get your V Okay, and then uh, for each of the components here, V1 and V2, V3 is going to be constant, remember. Yeah. Sorry, your V3 is zero, okay, because your P3 is zero. So, uh, so you just simply integrate your V over here uh, P is given by EXT here because the first component here and then E is given by that so basically this is V1 V1 is DX DT so you in order for you to get the, the, the particle position then you just need to integrate well uh, the integration is not so no, it's going to be messy, but essentially you have done this uh, kind of integral before. You just use a substitution. Okay. And then you can actually solve for your x to be that. And similarly, if you do for your y. Okay. Again, you need to integrate. In this case, uh, it's supposed to be simpler than the V1 case because you don't have uh, the time component here. But then that means you have to integrate this one over square thing. 
and that uh, you require some kind of hyperbolic uh, substitution, hyperbolic function substitution. So I hope you can do this by yourself. So your y will now be given by this inverse hyperbolic sign. So with that, I could now, okay, uh, z is going to be sort of zero because I'm now thinking in terms of your x, y plane motion. So I, uh, if I want to find out what, what kind of uh, motion that the particle will have, I will just need to consider what's the relationship between x and your y. Okay. But I already seen, no, you already saw for your x and you already saw for your y. And the relationship between the two is given by a hyperbolic cost. This again, I will let you do as an exercise. So in other words, what we have in this particular case of a pure electric field, okay? And you remember your electric field is, uh, is in the x direction. You get a hyperbolic motion. Hyperbolic is coming from your hyperbolic cause. Okay, so that more or less uh, finishes off uh, this particular lecture. Okay, so I will stop there for today. Let me get your attendance. By the way, uh. We need to discuss when will you uh, hand in your SCL. Any suggestion when you're supposed to send in your SCL? Everyone's pretty quiet. Okay, maybe we can suggest this in your in your WhatsApp group. So I think that's all for today. So okay, bye.